7, NS1D. This is 7th grade, the number system, part 1, subpart D. In this video, we are going to be using the operations of addition and subtraction uh, for rational numbers. Uh, we've already done addition and subtraction of rational numbers using whole numbers and integers, and today we are going to be using fractions or mixed numbers, even some decimals in there. Some terms to know, pause the video please, and define these words in your journal. I have a couple of rule pages for you to copy down also. This is the rule for adding or subtracting fractions that have common denominators. So if you notice in the bottom of uh, the, the first uh, set of fractions, right in here, notice the denominator is uh, common. So we have a C and a C. And by rule, when your denominators are the same, you are to add your numerators or, in the bottom case, subtract your numerators. Special note, don't let your denominator be zero. We call that an undefined fraction. Here's another set of rules I'd like you to write down. These are some rules that you've already learned from previous years when dealing with adding and subtracting fractions. This is just kind of a review today, so it's going to go a little quicker. In the first three problems, you're going to notice we have fractions in the first two and some mixed numbers in the last one. So let's work this out together here. We have a common denominator in the first problem of 7. Since the common denominator is 7, all we have to do is add the numerators. So keep your denominator 7. 5 added to 1 is 6. And check to make sure that that is simplified. And it is. Problem two. Common denominators, yes. OK, we have a 9 and a 9. That's great for us. So let's keep that a 9. And by rule, we subtract the numerators 4 minus 7 is a negative 3. Check to see if it's simplified. It is not. So what number goes into both 3 and 9 evenly? That would be a 3. So 3 goes into 3. That would be negative 1 times. And 3 goes into 9 3 times. And just a reminder, you can take this fraction and write it in three different ways. You can have the negative in the top with the 1. You can have it in the bottom with the 3. Or you can have it right in the middle. The third problem has mixed numbers. So it looks like we can just take our whole numbers, 2 and 6, and add them up. 2 and 6 gets us 8. And 1 third added to 1 third, we can write that out, 1 third plus a third. Common denominators, keep the denominator the same and add your numerators. 1 added to 1 is 2, and see if it's simplified. And it is. So we have 8 and 2 thirds, negative 1 third, and up top 6 sevenths. Circle that one to either one of those three. A little bit more difficult problems here on this page. I have fractions that have denominators that are not common. So we have to use the equivalent fraction idea here. It's one of your terms. So if I need to look at the first problem and get a common denominator, think to yourself, what number goes into both 6 and 3? 6 and 3 would be least common denominator of 6. So since we are using the common denominator of 6, there's no need to change this numerator in the first fraction, so it remains 5. And in the second fraction, we are going to have to change the numerator because we changed its denominator. So what did you do to get from 3 to 6? Well, you multiplied by 2. 
So if you multiply the bottom by 2, you also multiply the top by 2. So you're going to get 2, 6. And if, if you reduced or simplified 2 over 6, just think about reducing that fraction. What is it going to turn into? It's going to turn back into a third. So we call these equivalent or equal fractions. All right, let's continue. We now have our common denominator. We add the numerators to get 7. And that is a no-no. We cannot have an improper fraction answer. So this fraction bar means division. So 7 divided by 6. How many times does 6 go into 7? It goes in one time. How many leftovers? Well, one left over. Your denominator that we had is 1 and 1 sixth. Problem 2. Denominators of 5 and 8, and we're subtracting. So we need a common denominator. What goes, what number do both of these denominators go into evenly? And the smallest one would have to be 40. I hope you know your multiplication facts. That's how I did it. And we're subtracting them. So what did you do to get from 5 to 40? Well, you multiplied by 8. So you multiply the top by 8, and you get... 32. What did you do? What did you do to get from 8 to 40? You must have multiplied by 5. 7 times 5 is 35. Common denominator is 40, which is what we wanted. And now we subtract 32 minus 35 is a negative 3. And that is simplified. Remember, it can go in the bottom, negative 40, or it can go in the middle. Problem three, lower left-hand corner. Let's use this. Three and four, ten. Okay, so we have a extended problem here, a multi-step problem where we have subtraction and addition. I don't see any negative signs per se, uh, so I am just going to follow my basic rules of lining up my decimal. So subtracted by one and one tenth. Bring your decimal down. We have two and three tenths and now what am I going to do to that I'm going to add line up my decimals add them up I have nine and I have six so six and nine tenths the final problem I have a couple of negatives and in one of my previous presentations, I showed you how to add and subtract negative numbers, negative rational numbers. In this case, both of them have a negative sign. So by rule, I'm going to add my decimals and keep the sign of my higher absolute value. So let's add up our decimals, line them up. And I come up with some type of 41 and 41 hundredths. Now I have to play that absolute value game. So I take the absolute value of both integers, or both rational numbers, and I see that the absolute value of negative 28 and 15 hundredths is 28 and 15 hundredths. And this one is 13 and 26 hundredths. And who's bigger? This one is bigger, so I'm going to steal the sign of this bigger absolute value, which was negative. And we have a negative answer. 
So today I did a very quick review of adding and subtracting rational numbers using fractions and decimals. We will be doing many more of these in the class this week. I'm also going to add some more difficulty in with uh, changing the signs of these rational numbers, throwing in some more negatives and making them, uh, like I said, a little bit more difficult. So in your journal. To find the given terms on page two of the flip chart, as we always do, and write a few sentences on what you learned. And if you had any questions, please write down the questions and bring those to class with you.